My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and a specialist antimicrobial pharmacist in secondary care. I've been working for the NHS for five years now as a hospital pharmacist. I want to go through my pay as a junior pharmacist working for the NHS. So I'll explain a bit about my background and the role that I worked within and how much I was paid on an annual and monthly basis. So I started working as a hospital pharmacist for the NHS in 2017 and that's when I registered. I completed my pre-registration year in community pharmacy. So my first role as a hospital pharmacist was working as a junior pharmacist. I'll go through my pay as a junior pharmacist between 2017 to 2018, and then I'll go through the pay from 2022 all the way to 2023. So I'll give you the updated pay for junior pharmacists working for the NHS today. So first of all, what is a junior pharmacist? The term junior pharmacist means that the pharmacist has completed a master's in pharmacy, which is four years, or the pharmacist has successfully completed an OSPAC course, and this is for international students, and then they have completed their one year as a foundation trainee pharmacist. And then after the five years, you can then apply for a role as a junior pharmacist working for the NHS. As I mentioned, I started in 2017. So when it was 2017, I was paid 26,565 pounds annually. Now let's break down these figures so I talk about it monthly and then we can talk about any deductions that you may receive and how much I actually took home. If you're considering a pay of 26,565 pounds, that will mean before deductions, your gross would be 2,213 pounds a month. However, there are several deductions that will impact the amount of money that you actually take home. Let's go through some of the deductions. In terms of a pension contribution, NHS staff can opt in or opt out to paying their pension. And if you're contributing to your pension, that will be 9.3% per month. That amounts to £157 monthly. If you're working in the United Kingdom, most people will have to pay income tax and they'll also have to pay national insurance contributions. Now combining these two together, this is where the bulk of your deductions will come from. In terms of the income tax that I paid, it was £201 a month. And in terms of my national insurance contributions, it was £184 a month. So this means that after all my deductions, I took home £1,670 a month. If you consider that as an hourly pay before deductions, I was paid £13.59 pence an hour, and that's before those deductions. So let's calculate it with those deductions. So roughly speaking, with deductions, I came out with 11 pounds and 10 pence an hour. That's taking into consideration national insurance, that's taking into consideration income tax and pension contributions. As you can see, the pay was a lot lower than people would expect considering that community pharmacies roughly were getting a gross of 20 pounds an hour. And I'll speak about that in a bit more detail when I compare the annual salaries. One thing that's important to mention is where you start in terms of the pay scale. So the NHS has a set pay scale for all of the healthcare professionals that work for the NHS. I believe it's slightly different for junior doctors. And if you are a junior doctor, you can help me with that in the comment section below. But a lot of the nurses, physiotherapists, and pharmacists get paid in accordance with the same pay scale. But they all start on different parts of that particular pay scale. So junior pharmacists will start as a band six NHS employee. Now, considering band six pay today, so looking at 2022 to 2023, let's consider how much you will be paid as a junior pharmacist. So annually, it has now increased to £32,306 annually. This means that your hourly rate without deductions is £16.52. pence. So that's a roughly £3 increase in the past five years. And that will take into consideration the national inflation rate. And arguably, this doesn't wholly take into consideration the amount of inflation that we've seen in the past five years. And this is why NHS employees will always argue that considering the inflation rate, 
there is a pay cut. There is realistically a pay cut because the increase in NHS pay has not taken into consideration the inflation rate annually for the past five years. How much would you take home a month if you're a junior pharmacist working between 2022 and 2023? You will take home 1,915 pounds. That's 1,915 pounds. And this is taking into consideration your pension contribution, which would be roughly 250 pounds, your income tax deduction, which is 278 pounds, and your national insurance contributions, which has had a slight increase and now it will be £249 a month. So after all of those deductions, you will roughly get £1,915 to take home with. It's always important to note that pension contributions are optional and you can opt out of paying into the NHS pension. But it's also worth noting that the NHS offers a great pension. So quite often you will see NHS employees pay into that pension contribution. One major increase that I believe doesn't get enough attention is the fact that when I was working as an NHS employee in 2017-2018, my pay will increase every year. So there will be a pay increment every year. And now with the new pay scales, you actually have to wait two years until you see a pay increment. That means you have to wait two years as a junior pharmacist until you see an increase in your pay. And you should expect a pay increment the more experience that you have. Let's compare this pay to a community pharmacist salary annually and the average in the UK. The average salary for a community pharmacist working in the UK is £40,276. So you can see a rough £8,000 pay difference between junior pharmacists and the average for a community pharmacist. That has to be taken into consideration. That's why a lot of people are reluctant to move to hospital pharmacy because of that pay difference. It is something to take into consideration when you're looking for a role. It also has to be taken into consideration the fact that quite often people will stay within a junior pharmacist role for two to three years and then they will begin to specialize. And I'll go through a video where I will speak about the pay for a specialist pharmacist working for the NHS. If you found this video useful and you want to check out my other channels, they will be linked in the description box below. If you want to check out my website for any courses that may help you with your vision, if you're coming up to the GPHC registration assessment, then check them out in my comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.